I uh, had this picture in my head of like, what if you walked into a room and it was like this healing room and all that you felt when you walked in was love. And it was like thick in the air, like any person could walk in there, no matter how hurting they were, no matter what they were going through in life, if they were economically struggling or if they were struggling in a marriage or if they were struggling to feel like they're not alone or whatever it would be, any person could walk into that room and immediately all they would feel is love because it would just overwhelm. And so actually, I think it'd be really beautiful if we took a moment and we all just let love into our hearts. Because we love because he first loved us. So if we let love into our hearts before we worship, we'll have something to offer. And so if we can take a moment and do that and let love just come and fill the room.
every part of me and you see me and you know me and you love me through and through cause I want more I want more of you, Jesus. Reaching out my hands for more of you, Jesus. I lift up my song for you, Jesus. And I'll be your hands and feet, oh Jesus. Teach me how to be your Jesus. You know my heart, you know me, Jesus. Everything for me, Jesus. Lifting up my song. And reaching out my hand. where you want to go and I'll go with you lead me Jesus 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 I'll go Lifting up my song for you, Jesus. And I know you know my heart, you know you, Jesus. You know every part of me. Every part of me. What could you say to me, Jesus? That couldn't be true. Every word that comes from your lips is life to me, Jesus. Cause what could come from your great throne that I should not dance with praise? Every I will sing, will lift your name. I'm reaching out my hands to you, Jesus. Lifting up my song to you, Jesus. I know you hear my words, you hear them. Turn empty to you. I was leading a worship team. And, um, you know, I take seriously the verse in John 14 where it says, if anyone loves me, he will keep my commandments. And he will be loved by my father, and I will show myself to him. And over the course of my relationship with the Lord, I've grown with seeing the Lord as who he 
and show himself to me many hundreds of times. But tonight, I saw something of Jesus that I had never seen before. And it was his eyelashes. And as I looked at his eyelashes, I thought, oh, my goodness, you have eyelashes. <laughs> Beautiful eyelashes. And he said, Angela, what direction am I looking? Now, normally, for me, it's all about that gaze. But tonight, he wasn't looking at me. He was looking off into the distance. And I looked in the direction that he was looking. And I realized he was looking at the future. And as I contemplated what I was seeing, this divine download happened. And the Holy Spirit just whispered to me and said, look, there's two things that are necessary this year. Only two things. One, be as close to Jesus that you can see his eyelashes. And two, know that whatever is happening to you in the present moment is because he has your future in mind. Amen. You know, what we're doing right now is a lost art. There's very few places that know how to do this, and it's, it's a challenge. But in the scriptures, they use the word meditate. It means to contemplate him, to think on him, to chew things over, to think about a scripture over and over and over again until God impregnates you with something of his spirit. And what we're doing right now, maybe it feels a little foreign, maybe it feels just fine. Wherever you find yourself, Tonight, I just want to remind you that all we're about is learning how to be as close to Jesus as we possibly can be. And this process of worship, that's what it's about. It's about putting on the shelf every single thing that's vying for that one thing, whatever it might be. Worship enables us to put everything else on the shelf so that we can get as close as possible, so that we can see his eyelashes.
working on my art. There you go. something that I wanted to share tonight and I was eager to share it while at the same time I had that thought in my head like or I could just not (laughs) 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 
Um, <laughs> uh, I was like, how do I? So I, I had this friend, and I don't know if this is in the Bible. I feel like it is, but he, I don't know how I made it through 20-something years of life with never hearing it, but he said, uh, speak the truth with love. And I was like, it sounds like it's in the Bible. Um, <laughs> but that was probably a year or two ago that he, he shared that with me, and ever since I've been like, okay, so there's a way. You know, when you have a hard truth to share or something, something that you don't know how it's going to be taken, you can know that as long as you fill up your heart with love first and you come from that good place, then it should be received right. Um, and this is on a different different topic now, but I just felt led. Um, I have a friend I think might be on drugs. Um, and I had to ask his brother, I said, do you think, do you think your brother might be on drugs? He said, that's what my parents think. And so I know we're deep in a time of worship, but it just got put on my heart. And uh, if we could pray for him, I don't know where he's at. His name is Christian. You can keep him in your heart. I've lost a friend to drugs before, and I don't want to lose another. I was in a band with him. We used to play music together. We're pretty close. And that was a hard truth to, to come to because you never want to think that. So if we can just lift him up. If someone would lift him up in prayer. Father, that your grace is so good. I 
have two things to share. And um, this first one, I just feel like it's time to share more of it. And just to share you what's going on, this is actually um, is something that's it's, it's fairly dramatic, but yet it has tremendous hope. It, it has um, deliverance in it. Um, anyway, there was, um, there's been a group of people that the Holy Spirit has brought into my life, and I've shared this with a few people, and there's people in this room that know about what's going on. But um, during a Bonnie Jones, when she was here and was speaking, I ended up with a vision of Grant's past and lots of prophetic words for Grant's past. And in this vision, I didn't understand at first, but I saw these eagles flying over Grant's past. And I didn't know the number of eagles at first until I was having a conversation with another gentleman and the Holy Spirit spoke to me at that time during that conversation that there are seven eagles. And they were in flight, level with the mountains in Grant's past. And when I saw them, all these eagles, eagles were holding an evil, oppressive, demonic blanket. It's about the only way I can describe it. It was this black thing, this black cloud, and they were flying at the elevation of the mountains. I didn't understand what it was until the next night, and the next night I finally realized what it was, is that these blankets formed these peaks underneath every eagle, and they formed the seven mountains. And the Holy Spirit told me that they were mountains. And he identified them as demonic strongholds. Well, the Holy Spirit has been just working miraculously, all these things orchestrating. Well, anyway, a team of people have come together to deal with these demonic strongholds. And one of the words that came to me on a Wednesday night here at Firehouse was an understanding that when this demonic blanket, this oppressive blanket is dealt with over Grant's past, that healing will break out in this town. And, yeah. So there's been some people that have been going, and we have been led by the Holy Spirit to find these strongholds, and they were in high places. And seven of them have been identified. And there was a team of us that recently went to one of these places, and man, I'll tell you, I was so moved. the way the Holy Spirit works because he gives us words and he directs us. And during at Firehouse here again on a Wednesday night, he said, shine my light into the cave. And even sometimes you get these words and you don't really know what they are and you don't know what the significance is, but you just, I found you just hold on to it. You just hold on to it and you just lean into it and say, Lord, you just fulfill it. Let me understand it. But interesting enough, he used a lot of people to fulfill this word. There's people in this room that have spoken words of prophecy and, we, and knowledge that they might not even be aware of, but the Holy Spirit made me aware of it when they spoke it. He said, pay attention to it. He was working, using them. I say all of that just to say that that oppressive thing that's over top of Grant's past is being severed and broken. And the last the last place that we went to, after leaving that place, I felt so light. I felt like I was flying. It was almost like my feet weren't even touching the ground. And it was just amazing to go and give him all the glory to say the devil does no longer have control over these places. So anyway, I say that to you just for hope and know that there he has called people to a time like this to do these things. And his bride is listening. The ecclesia, people are listening and acting, whether you know it or not. People are doing stuff, and there's miracles working. So that's one part. The other part was Luke was singing a little earlier, and he spoke about the word of love. And I was sitting there just worshiping. And I did this. I spoke these three words. I spoke to my wife and I said, I love you. I love you. I love you. And as I sat there and I re I could see myself reaching down and I said, I, I said this in the spirit. I said, I want to reach in and give you a piece of love. As soon as I did that, this angel appeared in front of me. 
in the spirit. And it was as I pondered it, I went, wow, this is really amazing because this angel is like nothing else. <laughs> it wasn't very big, but it was rainbow colored. It had all of these vibrant colors on it. And I then realized what it was. It was standing in front of me waiting for me to hand this symbolic love to this angel and it would deliver it. And then I realized, I realized, wow, that's interesting. And then I was just, just dwelling on it and praying. I said, what, what, what are you? What, what are you? They're carriers. And I realized that they carry love for one thing, and the color of it is what that represented to me. And I realized the devil steals everything. He stole the rainbow and, and tries to twist it and make it look different and make it look something other than what it really is. But that's God's love. It's a symbol of his love for us that he will not do that again. Um, so these angels are carriers. And so I realized, oh, my gosh, there's an angel I never knew that existed. I don't heard anything about it. I've never heard anybody speak anything about it. But I realized that we can do that. And it was like the Holy Spirit wanted me to share that, is that we can, we can deliver things, use the angels to send loved one things, <laughs> whether it's love, a kind word, I'm thinking about you. You can hand it to them. And they wisp away and they deliver it. Thank you. Thank you, Father. That, that leads me to share two things. Um, kind of like a praise report. Um, when, when uh, Cliff was talking about the angels being messengers, I don't know who was praying for Christian because my eyes were closed, but when they were praying for Christian, what I was envisioning in my head was this cloud cover and an angel was hovering over looking down at the clouds waiting for that opening to go down and go to Christian and help him. And, and while you were praying, it was like I was watching this like gap open up in the clouds for that angel to just dive right down straight towards him. And he was so eager, he was so ready the angel was so ready to help him and it was that prayer that opened up the clouds so he could do it and they're definitely carriers they're messengers and I the second thing that I'm going to share is really cool because I haven't told Angela about it but she once texted me while I was out of town and said praying for you and the exact moment she said praying for you was when Someone I know who um, struggles with alcohol addiction asked me for alcohol. And I stood there the first time God has ever struck me completely dumb. If I opened my mouth, all that would have come out was just like, oh, like nothing. I had nothing. And funny enough, it was in the dark. It was this moment where he said, Luke, can I have a drink? And I just was dumb. And in that very moment, Angela texted me praying for you. Just like a week ago, I saw him and he said, I want to thank you for saying no to me. He said, my brother wouldn't even say no to me. And he said, I want to thank you. He said, I just really appreciate it. And he cried and he hugged me. And it was this experience that I, I hadn't forgotten about it, but I had put it off because I didn't want it to be awkward for him. And it was so phenomenal that he came up and he, he I immediately in my heart just started singing praise to God, like, God, thank you so much that you struck me dumb, because I didn't say no, I said nothing, I had nothing, I was empty, I was, I wanted to say no, I wanted to, you know, you know, but all that came out was after he'd walked away, I said, I care about you, and that was it, I was, I was empty, um, and just credit to, credit to prayer credit to God for his for his beautiful way of sharing with his children when someone needs something and putting it on their heart and then they just they just send out that message of love and it's so like vital and it has an effect and it's so beautiful yeah <laughs> yeah
Angela has a way of doing that. She does <laughs> that, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's very pretty. I just have a scripture it's psalms 40 it says as angela was saying um what were you saying angela <laughs> it, made, <laughs> it made me think of the whole yeah anyway um it says i waited patiently for the lord he inclined to me and heard my cry he drew me up from the pit of destruction, out of the miry bog, and he set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Amen. Hallelujah. He's done that for all of us. Thank you, Jesus. I think piggybacking off of that, uh, as we've kind of gone throughout the night, I found, uh, I was reminded of a quote. I don't even remember who it's by, but it says, um, it is better to have, um, it is better to have never learned the father at all uh, than to have learned him wrong. And I feel like the Father's offering out an invitation to some of you to, to relearn him. Um, maybe you've, you've put your experiences of, of your dad on him or, or circumstances throughout your life. Um, and I feel like the, just the Father specifically is inviting some of you to, to be like, that, that's, not, that's not actually not who I am. When Jesus was, was hanging on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them because they know not what they do. And Jesus said that whatever I speak, I do not speak on my own accord, but I only speak of what I hear the Father say. And if that's true, then the heart of the Father toward you is preemptively already forgiveness. Because if Jesus doesn't speak anything, the Father's heart toward you is his forgiveness. That was a proclamation of the Father's heart when Jesus was hanging on the cross. And so, Father, we do, we, we ask that you, um, that you would help us to relearn who you are. that the only lens that you see us through is love because of Jesus. It's not condemnation. We 
It's not disappointment. God, help us, help us to believe what your word says. I was gonna be, I was gonna be done, but if uh, I want you to picture with me um, your worst moment, whatever that is. And after, after that moment is over, you're, you're walking back home. And the house that you're living in is, is up on this hill. And you're, and you're walking up to the door. And as your, as your feet hit the steps and you're, you're about to reach for the doorknob, you're, the door opens and Jesus is there in that moment. I don't want you to, to think about the answer that you should give. What is your response? Or, or what, is, what is Jesus doing in that moment when he answers the door? How is, how, what is his demeanor? And whatever that is for you tonight, there is a part of you, maybe not all of you, but there is a part of you that believes that is how the Lord sees you. Whether that is anger, whether that disappointment, whatever that is. And I, that, that, I just want to pray into that for a second. Jesus, Father, Holy Spirit, thank you that that you invite us in, you invite us to the table. God, no matter what we've done, no matter where we've been, that you are, you are so gracious and you are so loving toward us. Because that is who you are. I just pray that we would receive that in a fresh way tonight. That we would receive your love that knows no bounds or depths. And God, I pray for um, the desolate young man or the desolate young girl in us or the scared little boy or the scared little girl in us, in each of us. That you would welcome that part of us home. That you would show it care, that you would show them, that you would show them care, that you would show them compassion. I love the fall peace. It's, it, the spring peace are great too, but it seems like there's more portals that are open in the fall. And um, I was asking God, why is that so? Because, I mean, look what happened during the spring feast. And I'm going, why are the portals so open? And he reminded me that the fall feasts are the feasts that are waiting to be fulfilled. So there are more open portals now. And what we're waiting for, we're waiting for our bridegroom. And we know he's going to come during the season of Rosh Hashanah. And that the fall feast is, is the story of the wedding ceremony. And um, 
I asked Amanda for the privilege of ushering in the new year because it's, like I said, I love this this part. Um, Brad, I thank you so much for the broken infinity. I was burning on my heart. What does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? Because with me, nothing is, there's no such thing as offensiveness. That's just how I think. Mm -hmm. And what what is a broken infinity? So I cheated. I asked Prophet Google. (laughs) (laughs) And, well, I also prayed and asked God. Because, (laughs) because after I did Prophet Google, because this is what Prophet Google said. (laughs) Nothing is eternal. Not everything is eternal. Not everything is eternal. That's what the broken affinity means. It reminds us that not everything is eternal. And I realized I started praying into God, why is that a problem for me? And he said, because you're an eternal being, and that's how you think. But not all things are eternal. I said, what's not eternal? And he said, illness, poorness, poverty, despair, sin, on and on those things are not eternal and i was thinking that you know that's what the 10 days of awe is about starts off with the new year then the 10 days of awe is the searching out your heart and then the day of atonement is when all those things that you don't want to bring into the new year you get to lay down is that like a cool thing that god has provided for us that we get to lay those things down and not bring them into the new year and so i asked god god what does this what's happening this year i just want one little snippet for tonight and i was asking him today just one little snippet lord i just want a a sneak peek and there and he he reminded me of all the times lately that i've heard esther and you know all these people talking about their esther callings and everything else like that and i've heard it before and we go through these waves of esther seasons and he says i'm bringing you into another esther season but it's the one you don't like but it's the one that's going to be the most effective and i'm going okay okay you got my you got my attention i'm excited now and he said um you know, we, we like the warm fuzzy for such a time as this. But we also have to recognize that God has given a lot of us favors over an ungodly king. That we have favors over kings that are not necessarily of God. He's given us that special favor. So this year, we get to make a stand. And we get to say, This is what's happening, and it's not good. And you could do something about it. Can you, will you please do something about it? We get to go to the ungodly king and say, this is what you can do. Will you please do it? And that's hard for us. And so there's a lot of us that have that Esther calling. So we need to be looking into who do I have favor and who do I make and where do I, where am I asking to make a stand? Because um, Mordecai told um, told Esther this that if you don't make a decision, if you don't make the choice to go before and, and cash in on your favor, it's going to come upon you too. You will not be spared. And that's what we don't, you know. And so that's where we're at is that we get to be the real Esthers and we get to make a difference. So that's the snippet I got for the new year. Is that cool or what? All right. So, um, um, so anyway, so um, Lord, thank you for the sweetness of the new year. Thank you that, Lord, there's things that need to change, and but Lord, this all this goodness, all these promises of the new year that you're just bringing us. And, Lord, we just thank you for that, Lord. We just, Lord, we give you the first fruits of this year right now. Mm -hmm. And, Lord, it's our hearts. It's our hearts that are being cleansed within these next 10 days. Lord, and we just, we give you that as our first first fruits. And um, um, I'd like to pass out apples and honey. And as you do that, I'd like you to just think about the sweetness of God in this new year. And how he wants to wrap you in his love and that sweetness that no matter what this year may look like, you started out this year wrapped in his, the sweetness of his love.
So um, I'm just going to hand it, and if you guys could just take one um, and just meditate. And then in a few minutes, we'll usher in the new year with the shofar. you don't know you're hungry and then you eat something that's all out hunger and God you are good I know
So this is what I want us to do. Um, we are at sundown, and that means that we are right at the cusp of the new Jewish year. And um, as I was sitting here just asking the Lord, like, what do you want to say to us? And th this, is, this is what's coming up in my spirit, and I just want to share with you guys. Um. We were talking up here earlier, and someone was saying, well, do you know much about the Jewish holidays or whatever? And and I, I kind of made a joke that wasn't a joke, and um, which was that I don't really care about the Jewish holidays unless the Holy Spirit says you need to care about them this year, you know? And um, and that's the case, and why, why we're doing this this year is that about six weeks ago, the Lord began to put it on my heart that we needed to do something fresh and new for the new year. And um, at the same time, I think it was about four to six weeks ago, Prophet Charlie Champ also released a word that this is a these particular holidays have significance this year and that they're going to really switch the tide from what we've been living through in the last seven year period that we've been in. And um, and as, been, uh, as I chewed on that, and I said, I said to Dwayne and Tracy, I said, we, we need to pray about how we're going to do this. What is it that the Lord wants to do? And, and little pieces began to fall into place. And um, uh, we knew that it was going to coordinate with uh, Ruach. And so I was like, well, what if we started the 10 Days of Awe with Ruach and then ended the 10 Days of Awe with, um, with the prophetic word for this next year? And typically I do a prophetic word at, in January every year. And the Lord said, no, this year you need to do it in September with the Jewish New Year. And so um, a week from this coming Monday, we're going to come back here after the 10 days of awe are finished. And I'm going to release the prophetic word for 2024. And um, I'm going to tell you it's a doozy. <laughs> what I've been getting so far in good ways, you guys, it's a doozy, okay? Um, it's, there's such a shift from the earthly kingdoms to the heavenly kingdoms that we're in the middle of, right? Amen. And so part of what we're going to be walking into in 2024 is, is a clash of kingdoms. But guess what? We're on the right side. So <laughs> it's going to be an exciting time. And, and, you know, this thing with Esther, when Sheila said, you know, we're all hearing Esther a lot, it's because the Lord's highlighting Esther right now. And that verse in Esther, you were born for such a time as this, this is true about every single one of you. You were born for such a time as this. We're ready for this. Whatever... Whatever the clashing of kingdoms looks like, we're ready for it. And we're going to, together as a community, we're going to go forward into the future knowing that he has it stably in his hands. And so um, we're, I'm really excited about releasing this word because I think it's, it's going to be a doozy. And, you know, it's funny because I was walking in and people were like, 
telling me, well, the Lord told me to fast this, and the Lord told me to fast this, and, and I heard some interesting ones today. I thought I had one of the most interesting ones. Like, last year when I was preparing for Greece, the Lord told me to eat only beef for 40 days. <laughs> and everyone was like, are you kidding me? And I did. I ate beef for 40 days, and we had breakthrough in Greece last year, and it was just amazing. And, um, but, you know, the Lord is going to tell you what to fast. Um, you know, the reason why people fasted food in the olden days is because their whole lives were consumed with it. They didn't have modern conveniences. So fasting food meant that they had time to sit before the Lord. I want that to really sink in. Because oftentimes we think of fasting as simply fasting food. But really what it is, is putting aside things that are getting in your way of spending time with him. Mm-hmm. Fast. Fast what? Worry. Come on. That is a good one. That's a good one, right? And, um, you know, I've had fasts where the Lord tells me to turn off my phone for 30 days or uh, not look at Facebook for 21 days or whatever. And whatever it is, the Lord knows usually right where to go. You know, he knows where to put his finger. And, um, and so I want you guys to be praying about that. What does that look like for you personally? And, you know, um, I'm going to tell you mine just because it was odd. <laughs> and, I, and it's not odd for the sake of odd, but I hope it, it helps you understand something. About six weeks ago, I had a vision. And in the vision, I was, I was barefoot, and I was putting on a pair of new shoes. And these new shoes were two-toned brown heels. I'm going to say that again. They were two-toned brown heels. And the Lord spoke to me, and he said, because brown is the color of humility for me. And he spoke to me and he said, it's time to become professional and it's time to remain humble. (laughs) And he said, as you go into this next year, I want you to go in as a professional. And that's interesting to me because I feel like the Lord is calling all of us up into a more professional sense. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? We're not playing church anymore. (laughs) You guys see, see what I'm saying? We're not, we're not playing at these things anymore. We're coming into a season that, yes, it will be more serious, and yes, it will be more joyous. But putting on the professional shoes, it's shifted the way that I've been doing my days. And, and so the Lord spoke, said, I thought I was going to fast a certain way. I was like, oh, I'll just do this and this. And then the Lord spoke to me yesterday, and he said, no. He said, from these days to these days, I want you to present yourself to me for five hours. And when you present to yourself to me for five hours, I want you to present yourself as a scribe and a scholar. As a scribe and a scholar. Listen, these are my, like, profession. This is me coming to God professionally. That's what he's saying. I want you to take this seriously. So I'll be sitting before my laptop with all my commentaries around me. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of commentaries, actually, but um, you guys know what I mean. I will be in my studious mode. I will be ready to be a scribe and a scholar. And I feel like I'm going to be coming out of these days with a whole download from the Lord of, of instruction for what's coming. And that's what I'll be doing in prepa- preparation for when we meet back here in 10 days. I'm sharing all of this because... This word awe is actually pretty special to us here at Firehouse. And um, it was special from before Firehouse even began because I had a dream in which the Lord said, I want you to pursue my awe. And this is what he said, I want you to help Grant's past pursue my awe. And I didn't know really what that meant, but I'm starting to get there. (laughs) And here's the thing, you guys, for the next 10 days, these days of awe, the, the way the Jewish holiday works is you are actually supposed to present yourself before the Lord in all of your non-glory <laughs> and say, search my heart. Mm. Now, let me tell you how the enemy is going to try and trick you. I, I'm going I'm to be really honest with you right now. Let me tell you how the Lord's going to, or the enemy's going to try and trick you. He's going to come to you when you're spending time with the Lord, and he's going to do everything he can to make sure that your gaze is not on Jesus. Now, that sounds like, oh, no-brainer, right? But let me tell you what what 
one activity that the enemy's been doing in my life that the Lord has finally showed me and highlighted to me. The enemy has been coming into my life and showing me um, numbers when I'm in the presence of the Lord. Or he'll say like a part of a verse that I need to look up. And guess what? I'm, I was gazing at the Lord. And now I think I'm doing something good. I'm looking up what this number means. Or I'm looking up what the scripture is. And guess what? My mind just goes off. And he's successfully been able to pull me off of the gaze. I'm saying this as a warning <laughs> because I really feel like it's so easy for us to, in the good parts of our soul, be pulled away from what the spirit is trying to do. For the next 10 days, as much as you can, learn to not let him do that, A, and B, stay in the place of the gaze. Because awe comes from him. It's, the, it's the, the seat of his majesty. We are unfamiliar and uncomfortable in our society with the emotion of awe. We're just not used to it. We come from a scientific community. We like to tell you how things happen and why they happen. But this, this feeling of awe means that we're allowing him to look into us into the very deepest places and we're letting him go there. And for some of us, uh, myself, uh, probably all of us, <laughs> myself included, it's challenging sometimes to let him go as deeply into my heart as he actually wants to go. And so I am willingly a participant when the enemy comes and says, oh, I don't know, number 423, like, oh, I have to look up what 423 means or what, what song, is it Psalms 423? Is it Song Sol Solomon 423? And then I'm off to the races and my mind's whirling. And guess what? My gaze is no longer where it needs to be. I'm not saying it's always like that. I'm not saying that, you know, this is always going to be the case. But I am saying in this season, I feel like the gaze is more important than ever. And I feel like the Lord is saying, if you will take these 10 days to let my awe wash over you. And you know how awe happens? You just look. It's just about looking, right? 10 days of awe. I'm just going to look at him. And when I look at him, right, Sheila, it just, it just works out. <laughs> He shows me what needs to be done. He shows me where I've believed a lie. He shows me where, um, you know, I need to repent for a, a generational curse. He shows me those things. But my job is to keep the gaze. And that's what the next 10 days are. I'm not going to say it's easy. <laughs> I'm not going to say, but that's why we add fasting with it is because fasting is this, I am purposely setting aside either time, money, energy, uh, strength even, so that my gaze can remain fixed. And if I can't do it on day one, I'm going to try again on day two. And if I can't do it on day two, I'm going to try again on day three. And, and there's 10 days that we get to practice awe. The reason it's called the 10 days of awe is because by gazing at him, all the stuff that we've been carrying just remedies itself in his presence. And so we come to the end of those 10 days, and we're going to meet again at the end of those 10 days, and our hearts are going to be changed. Our view of how we see our lives and how we see ourselves um, amongst other people is going to be changed. Our eye is going to be more single. And so I want to encourage you guys as we um, kind of go on this 10-day journey together to not be discouraged, continue practicing. Sometimes every day of just making that choice, I'm going to try again today, is all you need to do. <laughs> He's so faithful. Um, both um, Luke's um, word and there was someone else's word about the Lord is willingly sending forth his host. He is the Lord of hosts. He is the Lord of angel hosts. He's willingly sen sending forth his angels to do his kingdom in you.
he's willingly doing it. He's so anxious to do it. And so um, we will be with you on Facebook over these next 10 days. We're going to be taking communion on Facebook. And it's not going to be every day, but you'll be able to see the videos. Um, I know I'm doing a week from Friday from Crater Lake. So we're going to go up to Crater Lake with a few people, and um, and we're going to be doing. We have a prayer assignment up there, and so when we do the prayer assignment, I'm going to go live um, and do communion with you guys from Crater Lake. So that'll be fun. Um, but there's going to be other leaders who are going to jump on Facebook this week, and you can sit down with them and say, I- "I'm going to do communion too," and it will be a touch point for you guys. You know. Um, of 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 just remind reminding yourself to stay in awe, and this is what I want you to guys to do for me. Can you guys do something for me? If you guys see the video and participate with us in communion, will you just comment under it? I'm keeping my gaze. Will you do that for me? And that way we can see that we're all on this journey together. And we're reminding each other, I'm keeping the gaze, right? And so when you see that video pop up and you set aside whatever five minutes or whatever, they're not supposed to be very long. We're just, you know, we're going to take communion, kind of a touch touch point. And you sit down for five minutes or whatever it ends up being, 15, 20 for some of us. Um, take that communion with us and then just put in the comments, I'm keeping the gaze. I'm keeping the gaze because together that's what we're doing is we have learned in this house that we can go much further together than we can alone. Mm -hmm. And so that's what this 10 days is about is just keeping the gaze, letting him show us what he wants to show us, but making the main point him. Mm -hmm. This is so um, challenging at times. And it's not, um, listen, Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and love each other as you love yourself. These are the two commandments, right? And and sometimes it's easier for us to, because we don't want to look at ourselves. <laughs> so we're looking at everyone else that we want to see loved. <laughs> but God's like, let me love on you. Let me love on that part that's been really hard. Let me love on those um, crusty areas that haven't seen the glory of God for a long time. Let me love on that place that's really tender still. Be in this place with me. And so that's what we're going to be doing. And um, listen, Dwayne did this amazing piece of paper. Should we pass this out, Dwayne? It's probably best to pass it out. Um, And we can kind of um, read through it a little bit together. But um, these are prayer points for for the next week and things that you can expect to have happen. And um, I really feel, you guys, um, let me put emphasize with explanation marks and underlines under this. I really believe that as you set aside this time, however you set it aside, maybe it's a, an additional five minutes in your day. Maybe it's an additional two hours in your day. Whatever the Lord shows to you to do, I really feel like you guys are going to have visitations, encounters, um, uh, conversations, doors opening. Listen, the verse w- the verse you're going to hear a lot this year is Revelations 4.1, and I looked, and there was a door opened in heaven. In other words, the Lord is giving access points in your life through you for the world. Sometimes we're like, God, send revival, and he's like, can I do it through you? <laughs> right? So that's part of what we're doing this next 10 days is we're listening to hear, like, well, how does he want to do it? And, like, oftentimes, like, I had this conversation probably a couple weeks ago of, like, oh, we we need someone who can do deliverance ministry. Well, how about us? (laughs) How about us do deliverance (laughs) ministry? Guess what? That's part of our job, right? But if we're, like, that's the thing. We get to say, what do you want to do on earth through me? And we get to put aside our own notions of ourselves to see what the Lord wants to do in us, right? So um, uh, let me see how we want to do this. Do you want to just read some of the things that you that are kind of sticking out to you? And Oh, okay, perfect. 
yeah okay wonderful okay so yeah on the back side key points um i love this charlie felt bolts of electric power during his encounter in trance when he brought this through so it says tell my people to prepare to be awestruck by revelation during the days of awe tell my people to separate themselves and to wait upon me on yom kippur for i will come and speak to them as a friend hmm. <sighs> Yokes upon their shoulders will be exchanged for mantles and anointing oil. Amen. God will break off any yoke of heavy witchcraft. There will be an increase of dreams, visions, and trances. Psalm 23 is key during Yom Kippur, the days of atonement. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The word want means we will not lack, diminish, decrease, or have a need. The days of awe equal a key to opening the door of rest and what God wants to take us into in 2024. Separating yourselves through fasting is the key during the days of awe. On the 25th and at Destiny Encounters, that's um, his ministry, Charlie Champ, um, and Moravian, how do you say that? Moravian, <laughs> Moravian Falls. <laughs> they will have prayer, take communion, and pass under the shepherd's rod as a prophetic act. Seek God and how you should fast for these 10 days, and there will be an increase of visits and encounters from, from, the God, as the she from God as the shepherd. These 10 days will set you, individuals, and specifically ministries, up for the next 10 years of what God has called you to do. Wow. Wow. Passing under his shepherd's rod is prophetically significant for impartation and separation. <sighs> uh, a comforting is coming for those who will seek the Lord. Communion will bring fresh atoning and overflow of God's glory or anointing, excuse me, and atoning. <laughs> God will close doors on demonic assignment and the, in, of the past. Transition will happen on September 25th. Prepare in Psalms 23, 5 means to set in order. God is setting things and everything in your life in order. Table of communion equals an altar of sacrifice. Amen. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> we were feeling too, and I don't know if this is for now, but it was really interesting as to how the room was set up because we felt like this space was like some kind of portal or some kind of hallway or some kind of walking into. And then when we were speaking of like what the Lord was wanting to do it was so much of like the fears of the past and just these things of the past and the things that have been um, just weighing on us, even thoughts of our own mind or ideas of God as the father. There's just been so many words that have been spoken that have all like he's tied a ribbon through all of it. And I love even the the verse that you spoke into of of singing a new song as we go into the new year. And, I, and we spoke about this last month as well. And the significance of a new song on our lips is in that fact is a prophetic act because it creates a, the atmosphere, the song, the word, the thing that we're speaking into, the thing that we're saying is we're prophetically decreeing into the new year. We're singing a song. We're creating an atmosphere. And I, I was reminded again by even how Jesus, like when, the girl, when he went to um, – when the girl, the young girl was pronounced dead, and he and she was really sleeping, right? And he made the the mourners that were there leave because they were singing a certain song and creating a certain atmosphere. And he told them to get out. And so it was like that matters, you know, that matters as to the atmosphere and the song that we sing. But I don't know. I don't know if it's just a physical prophetic thing of like walking through this this space here and into here or I don't know but it I just was on my heart this whole time as like and then here as well like the the passing under the shepherd's rod is kind of like the same kind of feeling that I'm getting but maybe that's just because of this paper and it's supposed to happen in this 10 days.
to be getting there by yeah. Sunday. And so you may come back here on Monday, you know, from your fun day with without a moment where you were tired. And I wish that there was. If this is what you've been walking back with this idea that you are coming under the authority of the Son, mm-hmm. which is capital T, capital S, authority. Mm-hmm. And we're coming under for the kingdom. We're coming under his authority to draw the sheep back to his person as mm-hmm. the sheep and the sheep. And, and we're coming under his authority and we're saying, you go, Lord. And so what's happening is that when we come back and we see it like that, we can't look at this as um, like a like a Good, yeah. So earlier in the evening, the very beginning, um, Father showed me two visions. One was that, um, like a leather um, horse bridle, and instead of it just being leather, a strap that would press on your skin, it was um, padded with this beautiful sheepskin. It was. Um, strong but tender it, it was soft and I um, initially thought that was just for me but now I see it's for everyone to hear because as we say yes to him that he will put this beautiful bridle on each of us and lead us into um, the place where he wants us to be the, the gift that he has for us the second vision was of, um, you know, the literal yokes that they put on um, c- uh, cows and steer and stuff, that he was going to take those yokes off and he was going to stand them on end and they would become like pylons under a pier. And um, so I, th- I think that that ties in with what you the, the rod and the staff and then the entering in that he would lead us or guide us into that new place. So let's do this. We'll have some worship music going, and, and I'm going to have you guys stand um, and line along this kind of river bed kind of windy, you know, chair thing we've got going on. And as you stand and you stand in that place, we'll just have people who are in the front pass through, and the people who are in the back um, um, will we'll, um yeah, we'll rotate through. Somehow it'll work. And um, But what I want you to do is when people are passing through, I really want you to pr- like pray for them. Pray for them that God gives them everything they need for the next 10 days to enter into this journey. And, and that they, they, they leave this place equipped spiritually to take this 10-day journey. Does that sound good to you guys? All right. So go ahead and stand, and let's go ahead and line up.
just for administrative purposes. If you come through, come and, and, and stack up towards the end, and those of you who are in the line just keeps moving that way so that we don't um, train our way up to the stage here.
let's just keep praying for each other. There's some really good stuff happening. Um, but I just wanted to share with you guys something the Lord's been saying to me as I've been walking through this line. It's for all of you. And um, I heard the Lord say, she laughs without fear of the future from Proverbs 31. And as I was laughing, the Lord said, just keep laughing. You have no fear of the future. And he says, tell my people that it's time to dance off their grave clothes and laugh again.
Sheila got healed during that. Um, if you want to come up and testify, Sheila. I'm going to be praying for My shoulder feels better. I want you to touch my neck now. <laughs> My, my neck still hurt. I'm still a pain in the neck, but um, my shoulder is much better. I can move it and all that. In fact, um, when I was praying for people after Angela prayed for me, I just started praying with my left hand. And so, yeah. Listen, um, when I was going through the prayer line, my left shoulder started hurting, and I turned to Sheila, and I said, is your left shoulder hurting? And she said, yes, massively. So if you're hurting in a new place in your body, the word of knowledge is active tonight, and just be praying for each other, okay? How are you doing, Dwayne? Okay, let's pray for some more. Um, if anybody has like a uh, like a spasm on the left lower back, I had felt that earlier when we were praying. What she mumbled was, "Come on up, so she can pray for you." <laughs> This isn't a fire tunnel, it's a car wash. <laughs> it is I, oh my because it's word. like wet and oh, moist and splashing so all over the place. So oh heavy. Gosh. Unless it's liquid fire. I could go with that. But it, it <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's a way to wash your car. <laughs> um, <laughs> that experience you had with Natalie. Yes, thank you. That was an invitation. If you ha have had experience you haven't had before, yeah. that's an invitation, that that can become your new level. So what you do now is pray into that, thank him for it, and look yeah. for opportunities to take higher risks, because that was no low risk, it was an invitation. Very there was a grace there, and you just walked into it like, whoa, oh. Exactly. So like. from this point forward, look for those little, huh, I wonder. And then just walk into it. That's when the face plant might happen in your life, which is cool. Yes. You, you'll get back <laughs> up and go, oh, I don't care. So what? I made a mistake. Amen. Oopsie. All right. You know, All right. But like that was an invitation to enter into that. Thank I don't know you. if you're praying in the spirit or not. Thank you. Um, if you have that or not. But um, even if you don't, it's kind of funny that if you don't, God would give you an invitation to interpret somebody's tongues. That's hysterical. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah anybody yeah. else find that funny? Um, right. So, right. like, it's it's like a entryway drug. Right. And once you taste this one thing, there's there's nothing else that's out of limits. So the oh, old yeah. way of, of teaching was that it's the spirit's will and it gives you special gifts, and most people limit it to himself. That's an invitation. That's beyond him. None of the gifts of the spirit are outside of the realm of oh. you to be able to walk in. But Everything in the kingdom of God is a seed uh -huh. and an invitation, and then you have to do something with the seed. You have to pray over it, water it, look for opportunities, take higher risks, fall on your face, get back up again, do it. And do, like that whole thing, that, that right there, you're like, he, she. Listen, I have to testify this because I'm freaking out. <laughs> 
Tracy came up to me and she said, pray for my fingers. And automatically the Holy Spirit said to me, it's a devourer. Pray against a devourer. And I prayed against a devourer. And we literally watched the swelling go down in her fingers and testify. Yeah, like um, the, they were hurting really bad. The pain's a lot better. It's probably like 80% better. And uh, yeah, and this, yeah, she's right. The swelling went down as she was like. <laughs> How long have you been with that? Come on. I love it. Come on. See, opening up of healing, man. That's awesome. Father, thank you, Father. I better not stand up here. I'm having balance issues. Oh, my goodness. I got you. I got you. Away from the stand. Oh, I had someone balance issues. I've never had that in my life. I, so many things that I've never had happen have been happening like in the last 24 hours. It is absurd. <laughs> more. More. Much more. More. Oh my more, word. more, more. As much as he can handle. Oh and then my word. A, a little bit more than he can handle. There's a pain in there. You guys, let's shofar in the new season, okay? Come on up here to the front. We're going to have a shofar uh, uh, cheer. Yeah, that's, that's about an 80. I can usually walk around and feel perfectly fine the second I sit down. And I'm like, oh, and, and, and I was feeling like great standing up. You prayed for me. I'm like, oh, I need to sit down. Oh, I still feel it. She prayed for me again. And I'm, <laughs> I couldn't do the L thing with, <laughs> with my body. Yeah, that wasn't, wasn't happening. The L thing. Hey, I'm inebriated, okay? Give me a break. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to show far into that. Okay. <laughs> okay, perfect. It goes along with what you're talking about. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the power of his glory and grace. Days of awe. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Some of you know it. Let's sing it. You sing it with me. Yeah. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Wow. Yeah, so I want to give thanks because um, I had the permission from the Lord to kiss one of the women that passed through, <laughs> my sweetheart. Uh, oh, yeah. 50 years, 50 years. <laughs> Glory to God. Congratulations on 50 years. As my husband say, it's the days of awe. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 